What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. Today, we're talking another history lesson, the history of the stock. Let's light it up. All right, so the history of the stockman, the stockman pattern. It is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, slip joint pattern that is out there. Um, now, people will argue back and forth, and I want you to let us know in the comments down below, which do you think is more popular, the stockman or the trapper? Let us know in the comments. Now, um, the stockman actually, it's debated, but it looks like when we look at history, the stockman came first. Um, around about 1880s-ish is when the Stockman first came out. Now, to actually understand how the evolution of this goes, we really need to go back to when the slip joint was first created with back springs. That actually goes all the way back to 1660. 1660s was when the first slip joint knives were actually made. And uh, you've got knives like the Ligulis, the, the French-made knives. Um, there's a lot of different patterns that came in there that were typically single blade um, between 1660 and the late 1800s. That's when they started really putting together and making multiple blade patterns. Now, the Stockman was an obvious choice for um, actual livestock owners, uh, especially out in Texas and out in the Midwest and West simply because it offered them a lot of options. And here's what I mean. You've got three different blades, all right? This is a traditional medium stockman from Case um, with the yellow synthetic handle, the stainless steel, true sharp surgical steel blades with the clip point blade. Now, originally, and I'm gonna show this one up close, originally, the stockman came not with a clip point blade, but with more of a thin, really, really thin spear point as that main blade. And that main blade is going to be on its own spring. You'll see right there. Then the two secondary blades are going to be on a spring together. Now, in this case, you've got a sheep's foot and a spay blade. Reason being, this is going to offer you options. So you've got your main blade that is going to be good for whittling. It's going to be good for cutting twine, all kinds of different stuff. You've got your sheep's foot, that's going to be a great utility blade um, if you really need a power cut, if you really need to get down on something. The spay blade is going to be just for what it says. It's going to be great for castrating calf bulls. Um, that's actually what it was designed for. Um, the spay blade has been used for that for decades now. And that's why this was a popular knife for all livestock owners, because that spay blade, along with the utility that you get with the other two blades, not to mention the fact that you've got multiple blades here. So if you're out in the field, if you're out working your livestock, you don't have to stop if you dull one of your blades and sharpen it. You can actually be out there in the field using it. You dull one of your blades. It's not cutting up to your expectations. You close that one, you open up a different one. So this offers a lot of different um, ways to use it, and that's why it became so popular so fast. Now, there are several different versions that have been made throughout history, and so many different cutlery companies have made Stockmans. Um, of course, you know Case. Uh, Camillus has also made a ton of Stockmans. This is my personal one from my collection. This is an old one that was my dad's. That was actually my great uncle's right there. We can take a look at that one right there. That's an old one. I haven't restored it. It stays fairly sharp right there, um, but you can see how it was uh, sharpened with a wet stone right there on the edge. Um, still got the sheep's foot spay blade that have definitely been sharpened down right there. Um, we've also got other versions. Old timer made a ton of really, really popular stockmans here. This one's a very interesting example, and this is another one from my collection, another old one from my collection. So you'll see the uh, noticeable clip point blade right there, and notice the difference. So you can see the rounded edges on the medium stockman here from Case, um, on the bolsters. You'll see these are a little bit more squared off. They're still rounded, but they're a little more squared off, and you'll notice that the blade, the main blade, is going to be a more pronounced clip point um, as opposed to this uh, really shallow clip point right here on the case. Also, you'll notice uh, the fully serrated sheep's, sheep's foot blade 
um, on the old timer right there. And this is from the USA made uh, old timers. And of course, still got the spay blade in the back end right there. Then we can look at some large stockmans. Now, here's a uh, large stockman version um, from our Sunset Valley uh, line uh, from Case. 1095 carbon steel. Now, you'll notice another more pronounced clip point blade right there. Really thick sheep's foot blade. Nice spay blade right there. But again, you'll notice on this large stockman, you'll notice the uh, bolsters are actually a little more squared off. Whereas, again, on the medium stockman, a little more rounded. That's going to make this one a little bit easier to carry, a little bit more unobtrusive, um, and slide down in the pocket a little bit nicer. Um, the large stockman, it's already large, so you might as well square those off. That's going to make it easier for production. And then uh, here's actually a fun version here that's actually got the spay blade and the sheep's foot swapped. This is an old Colt that uh, we had made. Um, about 11 or 12 years ago. This is the 175th anniversary. I've got a few of these in my collection, um, but you'll notice again the sheep's foot blade, the spay blade um, next to the sheep's, ne um, excuse me, the clip point blade right here, the main blade. Then the spay blade right here next to the clip point blade instead of the other way around like you see here. And then the sheep's foot on the opposite end. But still, same orientation as far as the main blade being on its own spring by itself and then the secondary blades being on a spring together. So, like I said, created about 1880s and was very popular um, with the frontiersmen and uh, with the livestock owners because of uh, the utility that it offered. So it has been made in multiple variations. Now, just because it has three blades does not mean it is a stockman. And you will hear a lot of older people, well, a lot of people in general, just thinking, oh, that's three blades, it's a stockman. No, that is not the case. Um, because you've got seahorse whittlers, those have three blades. You've got whittlers in general, which have three blades. Typically, those are going to have two to three back springs, and it's going to be one main blade coming from one end, and then the other two secondary blades on either side of it coming from the other end. So completely different orientation, and that's what makes that a whittler pattern. Um, then you've also got ones like the Buck 310. Um, that's going to be a three blade, but it's not a stockman. Um, that's going to be a completely different pattern, a completely different orientation. So, hope this has cleared things up a little bit. And uh, like I said, these stockmans have been made in so many different variations and by so many companies over the last 130, 140 years. Um, maybe this clears things up. Let us know again, like I said, in the comments down below. Uh, which pattern you think is the most popular. We're going to keep this history series going. As always, folks, it's me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. And remember, if it cuts like a stockman, then we carry it. Try it, baby.